Hi there, I'm Black Bright and I'm a bit on a roll today uh, because there are a few topics that I really feel I need to cover. Um, so if it's the first time you're passing through, um, I hail from the east of England. I cover a variety of subjects that I think will benefit you and help you to know what's going on and to do with legislation. It can just be practical things like today, the one I'm going to be talking about. I mean, you would think that it's not something that, you, well, you wouldn't even think that it's something we would need to discuss, but it is, especially with the increase of single parents. Because what happens is, is that when you have a young baby, especially um, now when not a lot of people are married or they have um, babies for a father that may not be around all the time, but who shows some interest in the child, takes the child away with him maybe on weekends to give the mother a break or just occasionally. And what might happen is because that um, father feels protective for that child, he may well put that baby in bed with him. And would you believe that 133 deaths a year are attributed to co-sleeping? What I mean by co-sleeping is sleeping in bed with the baby. Because what can happen, especially if someone's had a drink or has been smoking weed or has taken ibuprofen or any kind of drug, they can sleep quite heavily. They can actually turn on the baby and smother it to death. That is what has happened to 133 babies a year. The total of unexpected deaths, the total of um, healthy babies dying unexpectedly is 300. And 133 out of those 300 are attributed to whether it's mothers or fathers having the baby in the bed and smothering it to death. Sometimes you've got both um, parents in the bed. They put the baby between them to give it some kind of comfort and they smother it to death because they don't realise or they've forgotten that the baby is there. And the reason why I say I'm um, estranged fathers is because the mothers, they have a health visitor at a new birth visit. And that health visitor will tell them that co-sleeping is prohibited. The midwives will tell them that you must not sleep with your baby under any circumstances. So they don't have an excuse. They can't say, I don't know. But if they've got an estranged boyfriend or they've got a boyfriend who they resent taking the baby or whatever, they may not tell the father that they're not supposed to have the baby in the bed and the father may not know. The father may put the baby in the bed and inadvertently smother it and it dies. Can you imagine how tragic? Can you imagine living with that guilt of suffocating your own baby, smothering it to death. Can you imagine? It must be absolutely awful. But that is what's happening. And you don't see it on the TV. You don't see it in the newspapers. How are people supposed to know? It's confined to the time when the mother is in the hospital when she's so excited about the baby, when all she wants to do is get home, when all she wants to do is start her life with, together with her baby. And this kind of information kind of goes over the head. And so when they're getting through, when they're tired and they've the baby's been crying during the day and they've had all of this stuff to do, and they think, oh my God, you know, they start um, patting it at night or patting him or her at night to kind of keep them quiet and then they might doze off with that baby in their arms and then they fall over and the baby is on the bed and then who knows what happens after that. I remember when my babies were young, I would put them on top of my tummy and they'd sleep to my heartbeat and, you know, but I could have easily squashed, fallen over one side or fallen over the other. But now they've found out that so many deaths are caused by um, parents putting babies in the bed, believing that it's their way of keeping them secure, 
and warm and comforted and they end up smothering the baby to death. I thought it was important that I should just raise it, especially if you've got, even if it's not you, maybe you might be looking after grandchildren. Maybe your children have children. Maybe your sons uh, are new fathers. You can tell your sons and say, look, you know, I've just heard A, B, C, D and E. Please don't sleep with the baby. It, the word needs to get out. And the, the parents are getting so young. To me, it seems almost natural to want to sleep with your baby. It's like people who have animals in their bed. You know, it's, but the thing is with an animal, it's much more alert. And it will, if it's a cat, it will just, pew, you know, if you squash it or whatever. It was soon, its survival instincts will get out of that bed. But with a child, it's so vulnerable and it's so small. And these children are like six to eight weeks old, some of them. You know, it's best if you're tired and you want to comfort your child, sit in a chair. I don't even know which is worse, dropping it on the floor when you fall asleep or what. But, oh. You just have to be alert. It is best just to leave it in its cot. Really, stand up and pat it as long as you can. Or you have to get immune to the crime. But yeah, I just wanted to share that with you. I'm not going to drag it out. I just think, especially if you take a drink, if you normally take a drink or drugs, definitely do not put the baby. In fact, never put the baby in the cot or in the bed with you um appreciate could be lonely bored it seems like a natural i've already said that they call it sudden infant death syndrome it's called SIDS. that's the um clinical term for it um so report unexpected deaths 300 babies die every year i've already said that um 40 percent are not co-sleeping safely. 76% of parents have at some point co-slept with a child. So all I'm saying is, especially if you've got children who have babies or who, you know, whether it's male or female, just remind them, remind them and say, look, you might be tired, but under no circumstances, put the baby in the bed with you. And that's all I've got to say for that one. Bye-bye.